evening, boys and girls. Welcome to Lesson 6.7, Subtraction with Renaming. Our essential question for tonight is how can you use renaming to find the difference of two mixed numbers? So turn in your Go Math book to Lesson 6.7 and let's begin. All right, let's start with question number two. For question number two, it says 4 and 1 half minus 3 and 5 6. Let's start out by estimating first. Four and a half automatically can just stay as four and a half for my estimate. But I'm going to go ahead and round three and five six up to four holes because five six is almost a hole anyways. So three holes plus one hole is four holes. So four and one half minus four holes would estimate to be about one half left. So our difference needs to be close to one half. Let's go ahead and try this out. I always prefer to set it up by making it vertical. So I'm going to go ahead and put 4 and 1 half minus 3 and 5 6. Now we're going to do what we learned on yesterday's lesson by finding equivalent fractions with the same denominators. Right now I know my denominators are not the same, but we can make them the same. If I have a denominator of 2 and 6, I know my common denominator can be 6 because 2 and 6 both can share a same common denominator. 3 and 5, 6 now will stay the same, but 4 and 1 half equals 4 and 3, 6. So now let's focus on this part of the question, because we've already renamed it now. Now we have 4 and 3, 6 mi minus 3 and 5, 6. Take away 5, 6 from 3, 6. I'm going to have to regroup. So I'm going to take away a hole from my four holes and make that three holes. Because I took away a hole, I need to make a hole. And to make a hole, I have to add six, six. So I have three holes and nine, six. Now I can subtract three holes and nine, six minus three holes and five, six will equal four, 6 as my difference. Also can be simplified to 2 thirds, which is pretty close to a half. So yes, our answer is reasonable. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at question number 4. If we wanted to estimate 2 and 1 6 minus 1 and 2 sevenths, I'm going to say 2 and 1 6 is really close to 2 holes because 1 6 is hardly anything at all. So let's go ahead and say 2 minus, now for two, 1 and 2 sevenths, here's a picture of 2 sevenths. You can see that 2 sevenths can either be close to about a half or just say 0. I'm going to go ahead and just make this a lot easier and call this 2 sevenths as 0. So we're really just going to subtract one whole. So I'll say 2 minus 1 is about 1. Now let's see if our difference is close to one whole. So let's go ahead and rewrite it so it's vertical. 2 and 1 6 minus 1 and 2 sevenths. Now if we were to list our multiples of 6 and 7, the first one that would come up that would be the same would be 42. Let's all put 42 down as our denominator that will be common. Alright, now let's multiply. 7 times what is 42? 7 times 6 is 42. So 2 times 6 is 12. Let's put a 12 as our numerator. And now let's look at this top one. 6 times what is 42? I know 6 times 7 is 42, so 1 times 7 is 7. And now we have a problem because I know that I cannot subtract 12 42s from 7 42s. So I'm going to have to regroup and make it work. So let's go ahead and borrow from my two holes and make that just one hole. And now I can add 42 over 42, which equals a hole. So now 42 plus 7 is 49. So really this has a value of 49 over 42, which is actually one hole and seven 42s. Now I can subtract 49 minus 12. 9 minus 2 is 7, and 4 minus 1 is 3. So I have 37 over 42. Now my 
whole numbers, I don't subtract anything because 1 take away 1 is 0. Therefore, our answer is almost a whole, like our estimate, because if, 40, if a whole is cut into 42 parts and 37 is shaded in, that's almost 42. So it's close to a whole. So our estimate is great. And there's our difference. All right, let's look at number six. First, let's estimate. I'm going to say nine and one fourth. What do you think? I would think it's close to nine holes because one fourth is hardly shaded in. All right, minus three and two thirds. If I have two thirds, I know it's cut into three parts and two are shaded in. That's almost a hole. So let's go ahead and call this four holes. So nine minus four, our difference should be about five holes. All right, let's go ahead and set it up vertically. Nine and one fourth minus three and two thirds. Now let's go ahead and find equivalent fractions. I know four and three, their first common denominator that they will share is 12 because three, six, nine, 12, and four, eight, 12. So they both share 12. Now we can find equivalent fractions. Three times what is 12? I know three times four is 12. So two times four is going to be eight. And now let's look at our top fraction. Four times three is 12, so one times three is three. All right, let's subtract. Three twelfths minus eight twelfths. I can't do it because tw eight twelfths is greater than three twelfths. So let's go ahead and regroup. I'm gonna take away a hole from my nine and we're gonna call that eight holes. And now let's just add a hole to my three twelfths. So three twelfths plus twelve twelfths would be fifteen twelfths. So let's go ahead and put 15 twelfths minus 8 twelfths. Now I can subtract. 15 twelfths minus 8 twelfths is 7 twelfths. And now let's do our whole numbers. 8 holes, remember we regrouped. Minus 3 holes would be 5 holes. So the difference should be 5 holes and 7 twelfths. All right, for number 8, if we wanted to estimate first, I would say this is about 8 holes minus, all right, three and five ninths. I know nine is an odd number, so you really can't find a half of it, but a half of nine would be four and a half. So five is really close to that. So I'm gonna say eight minus three and a half. Now, remember when you subtract a fraction from nothing, you have to create something for it to subtract from. So I'm going to go ahead and take this and make it 7, and we're going to make 2 halves, and now we can subtract. 2 halves minus 1 half is 1 half, and 7 minus 3 is 4. So our difference should be about 4 and 1 half. That should be our difference. All right, now let's go ahead and let's subtract. Here we go. I'm going to go ahead and set it up vertically, 8 and 1 fifth minus 3 and 5 ninths. All right. Now, if you would like to pause the video and do it ahead of me, so that way you can see if your answer will match mine, you can pause the video now. But if you still want the guidance, just continue listening. All right. So for this one, you should have looked at your 1 fifth and 5 ninths and notice that it does not have a common denominator. So let's go ahead and make it common. All right. I'm going to list my multiples of 9. 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. Now I'm going to stop right there because I know that my multiples of 5 right here always have to end in either a 5 or a 0, so 45 would be the first one that they will share that's common. So we're going to put 45 as my denominator that's common. Now let's find our equivalent fractions. 9 times 5 is 45, so 5 times 5 is 25. Let's put 25 as my numerator for down here. And let's do the top one now. 5 times 9 is 45, so 1 times 9 is 9. All right. Can I do 9 45ths minus 25 45ths? I can't do that. So I'm going to go ahead and regroup. Let's regroup from our hole and make that 7 holes. And now we can add a hole. 45 over 45. All right, 45 plus 9 is going to be 54. So we're going to have 54 
over 45. Now we can subtract. 54 minus 25. Let me do it over here. It's a little hard to do it mentally, so I'm going to go ahead and show you why. Let's regroup. Okay, 14 minus 5 is 9, and 4 minus 2 is 2. All right, so we have 29 over 45. Now that's a regular fraction, and now let's subtract our whole numbers. 4 minus 3 is 4 wholes, and there's our fraction answer. And if you look at our estimate, it's pretty close. Four and a half, four and twenty-nine forty-fifths. Uh, half of forty-five is in the twenties, so we did great. So that's a great estimate. So I believe we are correct. So let's go ahead and do this next question. Carly bought eight and one-sixteenth yards of ribbon to decorate a shirt. She only used five and one-half yards. How much ribbon does she have left over? Whenever you see left over, that's a clue to subtract. And when you see she only used, that's another clue to subtract. Let's go ahead and subtract. Now, as you can see, my denominators are different. So what do we have to do? Make them common. I'm making 16 to be my like denominator because my multiples of 2 are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. And so I can see that 16 is also one of the multiples of 2. Okay, let's go ahead and make them equivalent. So 8 and 1 16th is still 8 and 1 16th, and 5 and 1 half is equivalent to 5 and 8 16th. Okay, remember our step. When you subtract 8 16th from 1 16th, you can't do it unless you regroup. Now I know that I can regroup by borrowing from my whole number, the 8. We'll call that a 7, and now I'm going to make a hole because I borrowed a hole. So I'm going to add right here 16 sixteenths because that equals one hole. So now I have a total of 17 sixteenths. Now I can subtract. 17 sixteenths minus 8 sixteenths will be 9 sixteenths and 7 holes minus 5 holes is two holes. And I know 9 sixteenths is already in simplest form because the greatest common factor that 9 and 16 share is just 1. Okay boys and girls, your job is to answer questions 1 and 2, which is like today's lesson. Make sure you show your work in your book so that way you can um, show that you did it yourself. Or if you need to do it on notebook paper, just bring that inside your book tomorrow to show with the teachers as we check your homework. We're also going to have you do questions 3 through 6 for your review. Please don't forget to assess yourself at the top of the page. And go ahead and get started on these last questions, and we will check them tomorrow in class. Have a great night. Bye.